All right, so this is Geometry 2-4, Deductive Reasoning. Um, make sure you put your name, Geometry, and today's date on there. The learning objective is to use the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. So first, because it's the title of our section, let's look at what deductive reasoning is. Deductive reasoning, sometimes called logical reasoning, is the process of reasoning logically from given statements or facts to a conclusion. So you start with the statement or a fact and you come to a conclusion. You don't have to write this down, but I think it's important to mention. Given true statements, you can use deductive reasoning to make a valid or a true conclusion. And we've been doing this in math for days and days. It's called show your work, justify your answer. So those items, that, so it's taking what we do anyway and now giving it a title, deductive reasoning. All right, so first, let's talk about the law of detachment. So here's the law, and it's a pretty big deal if it's law. If the hypothesis of a true conditional is true, then the conclusion is true. So if P then Q is true, and P is true, then you know the conclusion is going to be true. I know that sounds crazy right now, but we're going to look at examples and it'll hopefully become a little clearer. All right, I think it's important to mention to use the law of detachment, identify the hypothesis of a given true conditional. If the second given statement matches the hypothesis of the conditional, then you can make a valid conclusion. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so let's read through the example problem and then apply it to our problem, to a, a got it problem. Um, what can you conclude from the given true statement? Here's what we're given. If a student gets an A on a final exam, then the student will pass the course. Felicia got an A on her history final exam. So if a student gets a, so here's the hypothesis. A student gets an A on a final exam. Here's the conclusion, the student will pass the course. Here's our first hypothesis for a second statement. Felicia got an A on her history final exam. What can we conclude? That Felicia will pass her course. So another example is, if a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, that's your hypothesis, then you can conclude the ray is an angle bisector. So we're given RS divides angle ARB so that angle ARS is congruent to angle SRB. So here's our original statement. If a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then the ray is an angle bisector. So our hypothesis along those lines is RS divides angle ARB so that angle ARS is congruent to angle SRB. So we can conclude by the law of detachment that RS is an angle bisector. So this is one of those laws or um, geometry topics that when you read it, it verbally doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but when you look at the problem it's given you, it, it comes together. So we're given, if two angles are adjacent, then they share a common vertex. Angle 1 and angle 2 share a common vertex. So here, here's where they, they switched it up for you. So the hypothesis is, if two angles are adjacent, the conclusion is they share a common vertex. They give us, that angle 1 and angle 2 share a common vertex, they give us the conclusion. Since the law of detachment says only 
that the hypothesis has to be true, then we can't make a conclusion about this third statement. No conclusion. Because they give us the hypothesis, so we can't, you can't double back, but they give us a conclusion, so you can't double back and give a hypothesis, make a, make a statement about the hypothesis given the conclusion. All right, so here is our got it. What can you conclude from the given information? If there is lightning, then it is not safe to be out in the open. Marla sees lightning from the soccer field, then it is not safe to be in the soccer field. So we've got, there's a hypothesis. Hypothesis is being given, so we can say, then it is not safe to be on the soccer field. Let's do it with the square. If a figure is a square, then its sides have equal length. Figure A, B, C, D has sides of equal length. This is that scenario where we can't make We can't make a conclude um, a statement since we are given the conclusion no thank you um we cannot make a statement since we are given the conclusion and not the hypothesis. All right, another law of deductive reasoning is the law of syllogism. And so let's highlight what the law of syllogism is. The law of syllogism allows you to state a conclusion from two true conditional statements and the conclusion of one statement is the hypothesis of the other. And I think of this as the ripple effect. All right, so here's, I actually, law of syllogism is my favorite because um, it's, I think it's how I live my life. So if P then Q is true and Q then R, Q implies R is true, then P implies R is true. So essentially what you're doing is you're cutting out the middleman. So you can say, um, if it is July, then you are on summer vacation. If you are on summer vacation, then you work at a smoothie shop. So you can say, cut out the middle blue stuff. If it's July, then you work at a smoothie shop. So I like it because it makes it short and so weak. All right, so let's look at some examples. And then try it using law of syllogism. If the figure is a square, then the figure is a rectangle. If the figure is a rectangle, then the figure has four sides. So we can say, take the figure as a square, and the figure has four sides, since the middle guy is the same, and take him out and say, if the figure is a square, then the figure has four sides. So let's look at, this is a bad situation. If you do gymnastics, then you are flexible. If you do ballet, then you are flexible. So we have a hypothesis conclusion, but this hypothesis isn't the same as our conclusion. So we can make no conclusion, and we cannot use the law of syllogism. And just because, it, it, and logically it'll play out. You can't say, if you do gymnastics, then you are flexible. If you do ballet, then you are flexible. You can't just cut ballet out without connecting it somehow. So. All right, 
So let's do this for realsies. What can you conclude from the given information? What is your reasoning? If a whole number ends in 0, then it is divisible by 10. The next thing I better see is, is divisible by 10. If a whole number is divisible by 10, yay, then it is divisible by 5. So we can conclude that if a whole number ends in 0, then it is divisible by 5. Okay, so if a whole number ends in 0, then it is divisible by All right, let's look at this next one. If A, B, and A, D are opposite rays, so let's keep track of it. Opposite rays, then the two rays form a straight angle. The next thing better be two rays form a straight angle. And if you look, it is not. Two rays are opposite rays, then the two rays form a straight angle. So we can't use law of syllogism. That's law of detachment, truly. So where, um, what is your reasoning? Oh, I didn't put, put the reasoning. Um, let's put the reasoning here. So we definitely, if it says put your... Okay, so there's nothing to conclude here. If they just gave us this one part of the hypothesis, we can conclude that the two rays form a straight angle. But they've already given us everything, so we cannot make no conclusion can be made. So we can use law of syllogism and law of detachment together to make conclusions. Yay! Um, what can we conclude from the given information? If you live in Accra, then you live in Ghana. If you live in Ghana, then you live in Africa. Aisa lives in Accra. So let's take a look at the hypothesis conclusion on these. If you live in Accra's hypothesis, the conclusion is you live in Ghana. If you live in Ghana is the hypothesis, then you live in Africa as a conclusion. Aisa lives in Accra. We can use the first two statements and the law of syllogism, syllogism to say, say that if you live in Accra, then you live in Africa. We can use this new conditional statement, the fact that Aisa lives in Africa and then is in, lives in Accra, and the law of detachment to make the conclusion that Aisa lives in Africa. So let's see what conclusions we can make here. So if a river is more than 4,000 miles long, so let's highlight that in blue, then the conclusion is it is longer than the Amazon. If a river is longer than the Amazon, then it is the longest river in the world. And we have the Nile is 4,132 miles long. So, what, we can, what can we conclude from the given information? What is your reasoning? If a river is more than 4,000 miles long, does this statement fit this one. Nile is 4,132 miles long. Yeah, it fits. So we can say that by using the law of 
syllogism, we can say it is the longest river in the world. So we can say it's longer than the Amazon, and we can say it's the longest river in the world. All right, so this is P, this is Q, and this is R. And the information they gave us, the Nile is 4,132 miles long, is our P. So there are two statements we can put together from this information. So if we use the law, let's use the law of detachment. So if we're going to use the law of detachment, we can say the Nile is 4,132 miles long. Then, which meets the situation here, then it is longer than the Amazon. So using law of detachment, we can say the Nile is 4,132 miles long, then it is longer than the Amazon. Using law of syllogism, We can state, <clears throat> I think we need to put if, if the Nile is 4,132 miles long, then, and then we're going to say this R statement, it is the longest river in the world.